um, I think a lot of the debate on this entire issue has been an exercise in grandstanding. Um, some politicians have seized the nature of restoration law and blatantly stoked up fears for their own benefit. Not only opposition parties and independents, but also government backbenchers. And of course, they'll have to try and be in favour of it in principles. It's kind of environmental credentials tick, whilst being highly critical of it and satisfying populist demands. I wonder, can we get clarity on what the government's position on the nature restoration law is? Uh, Minister Noonan has said that it's happening. The Taoiseach has said that it's going too far. Uh, a Fianna Gael MEP voted against the law and Fianna Fáil MEPs are not supporting it. So what is the government's actual position on it? Minister, for example, when you're meeting your European counterparts, what exactly are you saying? It should also be noted that a Sinn Féin MEP voted against the law at the Agriculture um, and Rural Development Committee. So I think it's important to look at some of the facts. The need for far-reaching climate action simply could not be more urgent. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's recent assessment report shows a temperature rise of 1.1 degrees Celsius. This has resulted in more frequent and hazardous weather events and increasing destruction to people and the planet. To date, we haven't done a fraction of what needs to be done. Ireland's emissions are going up, not down. We simply cannot afford to wait any longer. The current trajectory is going to result in the unthinkable. Not only are we in the middle of a climate crisis, the scale of biodiversity damage is frightening. Figures from the National Parks and Wildlife Service show that 91% of protected habitats are in poor or in adequate condition, and more than 50% are declining. Half of our rivers and lakes and coastal waters are ecologically substandard, according to the EPA, including 18.5% of monitored rivers being severely polluted. You'd swear our existence didn't, existence didn't depend on this, but it does. The status quo cannot continue. We need radical change now to the way we live, to the way we travel, and to the way we farm. The first recommendation of the Citizens' Assembly on biodiversity loss is unequivocal. The state must take prompt, decisive, and urgent action to address biodiversity loss and restoration must provide leadership in protecting Ireland's biodiversity for future generations. But is there leadership on this? Is the government going to act on this recommendation? Because the national restoration law is a tool to help achieve this. It's a direct response to climate and the biodiversity crisis. It's a funded framework aimed at restoring degraded ecosystems with a prioritization of areas with the most potential to capture and store carbon, especially wetlands and peatlands. The proposal also acknowledges that certain groups such as farmers will be impacted more than others. So national and EU funding was proposed to implement the law. The re-wetting of peatlands has emerged as a point of tension, and that is understandable. Farmers are looking at the potential impact of their land and their livelihoods. However, knee-jerk reactions and meetings to actively stoke up opposition to this won't do anybody any good. The Minister has already pointed out that these commitments can be met on state-owned land and the government's own climate action plan commits to peatland restoration anyway. The best thing we can do, the most responsible thing we can do, is look at the proposals and look at how we can leverage them to the maximum benefit of family farms in Ireland. That would be a much better use of all of our time and energy. In a climate crisis, comments from elected representatives about how any kind of climate action is bad for Irish agriculture are irresponsible. You'd swear that as agricultural communities, we've got nothing at stake in relation to climate change. The opposite is true. But the narrative from both sides of this house results in communities who will be the most affected by climate change being the most reluctant to actually take any climate action. You couldn't make it up. Most people agree on the need for substantial action to address the climate and biodiversity crisis. Most farmers that I speak to agree. So one of the things that really frustrates me about this ridiculous debate that pits farmers against each other and environmentalists is the presumption that somehow farmers either don't care about the disastrous consequences of climate change or that we don't understand them. Either way, it's insulting to farming communities and it's not true. I have to ask the deputies and the MEPs and whoever else opposing this, what exactly is the plan for the future of the agriculture sector, for example, if we don't take climate action? 
Where do they see the future of the industry if we keep letting emissions rise, allow soil degradation to continue, more biodiversity loss? Where will the industry be then? The crucial thing in all of this will be principles of a fair transition. Rural and farming communities need to be supported to make changes, and that will require financial support. Also, with every policy, I think that there is considerably more scope for better engagement and consultation. It's clear from a recent Committee on Environment and Climate Action um, that there are considerable mistrust among farmers around government policies and promises. But we also need everyone to be responsible and to act in good faith, and crucially, we need everybody to be honest. To all the farmers out there who might not like what I'm saying, I want you to at least know that I will be honest. The Social Democrats are fully committed to climate action, to a fair transition, and to real honesty around that. But I also know that many of the voices claiming to represent rural Ireland today are only reflecting one position. I'm regularly contacted by farmers and others who often, and it's a shame it has to be, but kind of quietly support climate action and recognize the need for change. They recognize that the absence of that kind of action is walking farmers to a cliff edge. We're going to have to take it. Short-termism isn't going to help them. The rush to oppose this legislation, its potential benefit both rural communities um, can achieve our climate targets has been overlooked. The government could and should have been considerably more proactive on this. A nature restoration fund could immediately provide investment in rural areas for the revitalization of ecosystems. Farmers and landowners should be rewarded as custodians of natural heritage and our vital biodiversity. As farmers, we're used to being proud of our agriculture. We should continue to do that by being the country that leads the way in truly sustainable agriculture. Here, look, I had so much more that I want to say on this, but I think there's other aspects to the, the nature restoration law that haven't been discussed today, and I really hope Thank that you. we can come back to that at a later Next, stage uh, in this house. Slot has a government account, uh, Deputy Mark and Deputy Adams.